Now to make this ginger mead, we're gonna be using the following. I've got one pound of fresh ginger. I have three pounds of raw honey, one half a cup of raisins, one orange. We'll be using half a lemon. I'll be using half a teaspoon of Red Star Premier Blanc wine yeast. And of course, if you don't have wine yeast, this still works. We'll need half a teaspoon of bread yeast, the original active dry kind, and that's going to act as our yeast nutrient for our wine yeast, or if we're not using wine yeast, then it will act as a yeast nutrient for our bread yeast. It would be helpful if you had a straining bag. It's not necessary, but it can be helpful. We should have on hand one gallon of clean filtered water. I'm going to be using an eight quart pot with lid. We should have at least two carboys. One gallon or four liter, your choice. In my case, I'm going to start with a four liter carboy. And then when I do my first racking in several weeks into my secondary carboy, because of its smaller size, I don't have to lose as much head space because of the leaves that will accumulate on the bottom of the primary carboy. We are going to need an airlock with bung. I find that using a number six bung usually works with one gallon and or four liter containers. It would be helpful, although not essential, to have a hydrometer with testing tube to help us determine what our final alcoholic content is going to be later on down the road. And using your appropriate food grade sanitizer of choice, whether it's One Step or Star Sand, we want to make sure that all of our equipment has been properly cleaned and sanitized before we make our mead. Just follow the recommended directions for proper use. And that's what I'm going to be using to make this mead. Now the first thing we need to do is that we need to peel our ginger. Using whatever method you prefer. I'm going to use the spoon method this time around. Just go ahead and slowly peel off the skin. Don't do it too hard. You find yourself getting into these little nooks and crannies. I mean, you can work your way around it. Or you could just simply simplify life. <laughs> and get rid of the problem. Start off later. Oh, it's this spot. Oh, I did. Here we go. And go ahead and proceed with the rest of it. All right, with that being done, let's go ahead and rest these off and move on to the next step. Now then, let's go ahead and kind of thinly slice the ginger. Be very careful that you don't slice yourself. I mean, there's no predefined thickness. Just what you would consider to be fairly thin. Take your time. There's no great rush. Deal with this one as a special case. There we go. All right. Let's just get those in a bowl temporarily just to get them out the way. And These are good, so there we go. All right. Might just as well take this opportunity to go ahead and slice our oranges. Good enough. Let's go ahead and add these into the bowl. 
or ginger. Now the orange was cleaned, and in this case, with this particular orange, I had to do a little bit of scrubbing to make sure that it was all clean. But as far as our lemon is concerned, go ahead and slice that in half. And let's go ahead and squeeze that in our juicer. And for the moment, we're just gonna set that aside. The next thing we need to do is that we want to give our raisins a rough chop. And you don't have to, you don't really need to have every single raisin chopped just enough where the raisins can release their flavor. Hey, right. I mean, that's more than adequate. And we as well add that to the bowl. All right. Now, since I am using a straining bag, Take advantage of that opportunity. Let's go ahead and put everything in the bag. And go ahead and tie the bag off. Again, if you don't have a straining bag, well, I think you just don't have a straining bag. Don't worry about it. Press on. All right, it's now time to move on to the stove. Go ahead and start warming up our honey to help make it flow a little bit more easily out of the containers. All I did was just boil some water. Okay, now with our pot on the stove, we can go ahead and drop in our fruit and ginger and let's take uh, some of our water and pour that in for roughly roughly about well, half a little bit more than half let's put our lid back on and let's go ahead and turn on the heat to about medium. Or let that come to a boil. All right, I've let this come to a boil for a few minutes. And it's now time to go ahead and add in half a teaspoon of our bread yeast. Now, there might be some out there who might be saying, well, aren't you killing the yeast if you do that? To which I answer, that is indeed the point. We want that yeast to be nice, good, and dead. If it's going to act as a yeast nutrient to our other yeast that we're going to be using for fermentation. So let's go ahead and, uh, now since I've got the opportunity, let's flip that over. Turn the lid back on. And let's turn off the heat. And let the temperature come down just a little bit. All right, now that this is cooled just a little bit, I mean, yeah, it's still hot, but then there's no set temperature for it to cool down, at least not at this point. We're gonna go ahead and add in our warmed up honey. I mean, while our mixture is still pretty warm, I am going to go back and see if I can rinse out as much of the honey that remained in the container as possible. This might not be my preferred method of, get, of getting it done, but as an example, 
I mean, it does work pretty well. And I'll just go ahead and do the remainder, remaining three containers. All right, let's mash down in the bag a little bit. Put our lid back on. And now this, we're gonna let come down to room temperature. And by room temperature, I mean just that. Room temperature, not hot, not kind of sort of warm, but room temperature. Now that our mixture has come down to room temperature, I did that by simply letting it sit overnight. Uh, it's now time to transfer it into our carboy, amongst other things, with our freshly sanitized Boom. I'm going to go ahead and stop making so much noise. I'm going to just squeeze down on our bag just one more time so I can squeeze out any extra little goodness. That having been done, I'm going to go ahead and remove the bag. And using my freshly sanitized measuring cup and my freshly sanitized carboy and my freshly sanitized funnel, I am going to scoop up a little bit and using my freshly sanitized little bowl here, just pour a little bit into the bowl. And that's the bowl we're going to be using to bloom our yeast. The remainder goes in the jug. Now, of course, the easiest way of doing it would be just to simply pour this into the jug. All right, go ahead and bring this up closer to the top. Uh, by about so. There's still about maybe two cups of water left. We'll keep that on hand in case we need it. Remove our funnel, put our cap back on for the moment. And let's do something with our yeast. Now I am using about half a teaspoon of our Red Star Premier Blanc wine yeast to do the blooming. Now, of course, if you don't have that, this still works. Go ahead and sprinkle that on in and around. And let's just go ahead and set that aside. Now, if you remember, we did juice half a lemon yes. And it's now time to go ahead and add that to our carboy. The lemon is simply acting as our acid blend substitute. Give it a little bit more acidity as if it needed it. But careful not to get in any seeds. A strainer would be helpful, but that's all we need to do there. Put our cap back on tightly because the next stage of the operation is that we want to incorporate our water and our lemon juice and our previous mixture such that it's mixed in pretty well. Let's make sure you got a good grip on it. And I think that'll do it. Now, for those of you who have a hydrometer, it's now go time to go ahead and take that first initial reading using our dedicated wine thief here.
All right, looks like our initial reading is going to come in at... Yep, our initial reading is coming in at 1.090. Let's go ahead and return our precious ginger mead to be back into the carboy. Put our cap back on. And we're just waiting for our yeast to show signs of life. Okay, now that our yeast is showing signs of life, we're going to go ahead and add this to our carboy. Now would be a good time to go ahead and install our airlock. Levels have been filled up to the appropriate mark. And I usually use a, a weakened mixture of uh, star sand and water. Go ahead and take our cap off. Put our airlock on. And that should help prevent bugs and have anything else from crawling in and will allow CO2 to, to crawl to, to yeah, crawl out. And will allow CO2 to, to escape. It is now time to label our creation. We are making a ginger mead. And we started it on this date and our original gravity or starting gravity was 1.090. Now, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna put our wine someplace where it's relatively cool and dark. And we want to let that sit for the next several weeks. And as lease begins to build up, we want to begin the process of racking. When the wine is all said and done, after several rackings, we want to go ahead and degas it if necessary, back sweeten, probably for sure. Then the whole pasteurization, bottling, corking, capping, and all of that, which I have standalone videos for that you can check out in my winemaking operations playlist on my channel page. So, that being said, 12 months hence, we'll go ahead and crack one open and give it a try. So, until then, if you like what you see here, click on that subscribe and notify buttons, become a member, become a Patreon supporter. And I'll see you in the next video.